have noticed that God has a plan for every area of your life. You know, we are growing up, we go to school, God gives us plans, he wants us to study, he doesn't want us to be foolish, he wants us to have right relationships, you know, he wants us to marry the right people, he wants us to be good parents, but also he has a plan for your money because no matter what you say, money has a big part in your life. So I'd like to encourage you, just kind of listen, just stop and listen and think. And maybe you want to grab a pen and take some notes about money because money is a very important thing and God knows it's important. And so when we follow his plan, we see that money can be a blessing or the lack of money can be a curse, can it? Because we probably, you probably, and I have too, have been on both sides, but I've learned about how to trust God for money and that he does want me to prosper because the Bible says, beloved, I wish above all things that you might prosper and be in health as your soul prospers. So I read the Bible, because why do I read the Bible? Because that's soul prosperity. Plus it gives me the instructions that help me to prosper in my daily living and with people. You know, I used to think if we didn't have people in this life, we'd get along fine. But wouldn't we be lonely? Oh, we would really be lonely. So I started very early dealing with money. My father was an orphan, a German, and so he had a lot of fear about money. He was very tight with money. And you know, he didn't buy clothes for me. He said, if you want clothes, you'll have to work and you'll have to earn your own money for your own clothes. Now, I was about 11 and 12 years old in that time. And my mother said to me, now Marilyn, we live on an apple farm and you could sell apples because probably the owner would let you do it and let you have the profit. And she said, but whatever you do, give 10%, give offerings off of that amount that you make on the apples. So <laughs> here I am, so young, between 11 and 12, set up a little stand and got some paper bags and sold apples. And you know, those, that, those sales actually gave me enough money to buy some clothes. So from the time I was 11, 12 years old, I bought my own clothes. You say, how did you do it? I sold apples. And the money I made on that, I learned to tithe. I gave 10%, gave offerings, and God blessed me and prospered me. Now, when I wanted to go to university, I wanted to major in foreign languages. I wanted to be a teacher. You know, I said to my father, I really would like to go to a university. I'd really like to get a degree. Well, he said, that's fine, but you'll have to pay for it. How do you pay for it? Well, I was a tither. I gave offerings, so I had to believe God. Now listen, of course I'm older, but I'm telling you, I graduated and I didn't owe one dime. I didn't owe anything. I was a tither. I, was, I sowed offerings. So I learned very early about how there is great power in doing what God says to do with your money that he has a plan for your money. Usually we have the plan. You know, we're planning a car or we're planning a house or we're planning things, but get God's plan first and watch how his plan will overflow into your plan and he will meet you. Now I look back and think, how on earth did I finish and get my master's degree and started my master's and didn't have any help with it at all, except I had the word of God. 
I had the Word of God. And I love that. The Word works. You can put faith in God's Word. So I want to talk to you about money. I want to talk to you about sowing and reaping. I want to give you an opportunity to sow in something that is just tremendous. Now, I have an opportunity in February to go to, go to Saudi Arabia. Did you hear me? Saudi Arabia? You say, well, that's a Muslim nation, and they hate women. But I found out something about Muslims. They like old women. They respect them. And I am an old woman. And I have learned that you can win Muslims. I have more success with Muslims than any grouping of people in the world. But I tell you, there are certain things they really respect. And all of them, I'm talking about any of these people, like healing. So when you have healing meetings, you attract everybody. I mean, you'll get the Muslims, you'll get the atheists, you'll get them all. And so you learn, you get wise about how to do this. So I started tithing and God began to bless me in unusual ways. Then, you know, I wanted to major in foreign languages. I liked Spanish, I liked French, I liked Latin, you know, I liked Italian. And all of that was process. Now put your hand on your heart. Say, God has a process for me. God didn't just have a process for me. He has a process for every human being that he has made. And when we get in that process, we get into his blessings, his prosperity, and his success. So I got into that very early. You know, I started tithing early. I started giving and sowing, and God began to bless me. And I remember when I went to college, I was the only one on our campus at that time who had a fur coat. You say, well, why do you have a fur coat? Because I liked them. <laughs> and God blessed me and prospered me. But I got into the plan of God. Now, I want to encourage you to do something very special. Because I am older, and I am older, I have an opportunity to go overseas to the Muslims again and to have a healing meeting. Now, you, you don't just come up with the land and everything is okay, you know. I mean, it's a process. And it's a lot of money, and it's people going ahead, staff going ahead and setting it up. You know, it's leasing land. We leased five acres of land the last time I was there for a healing meeting and filled them totally. I mean, healing is it's just like a bell ringing. People come when they hear that Jesus heals. So I have another opportunity to go to Saudi Arabia and to Pakistan with a healing meeting. You say, well, you're old. I know that's my advantage. Isn't that good? <laughs> because they like old women. They respect them. Now, you say, well, what do you do in those meetings? Well, we advertise, and that's very expensive. We lease the land, you know, and that's expensive. And, you know, everything we do is expensive. But we take one day before we have the meetings and we invite Christians to come and we feed them, we give them a Bible, we pray for them to get born again, to be sure, because sometimes they say it, but they're not. And they get born again, we get them spirit-filled, then we train them for the nice of the healing meeting, to, for what they do to help us. And honestly, it makes me cry to think about it because we have tremendous results. Now, things have been very closed, but they're beginning to open again. 
and I want to go again to Muslim countries because I'm older now than I was the last time I went. So <laughs> they will come. Plus, plus, I have a reputation for healing. So when I say advertise, come and be healed, they know, yeah, that's Marilyn Hickey. She's been here and we saw Jesus heal before. So it's quite a thing. And of course, we have to take staff for it. There are a lot of things we have to do. It is expensive. So I'm asking you to sow a special seed. See, I believe those seeds that I sowed early, and my husband sowed too, and Daisy and T.L. Osborne's ministry, and they were doing international healing meetings. I think that's one of the reasons I'm reaping that now. That was a long time ago. I was really young then when we did that. But look, I'm reaping it now. And I've been reaping it for a long time. And thought, folks, this is what I always come up with. God so loved the world. He loves those people, but do they have an opportunity to hear and to receive? We have television, we have everything under the sun. And a lot of them do not have that. So when we advertise and they come, that may be their first time to ever hear the message that Jesus loves them, that he died for their sins and arose from the dead, that he heals them, that he has provision for them. So it's really a big deal. And I like to go, I've been to Pakistan a lot and had healing meetings. And I'm known in Pakistan by the imams, the leaders of mosques, you know, for healing. The leaders of mosques come and I believe I'll have even more because I'm even older. And that's really exciting to me. But again, it's expensive. And I would like for you to help me and to sow a seed. Now you say, well, how much? Well, you know, if a thousand people sowed a $50 seed, that would be wonderful. But if a thousand people sowed a $100 seed, that would be more wonderful because we'll probably have a lot more people than we're anticipating, especially since there's been a break and people haven't been over there. And now, and now, now it's opening up again. So I would like for you to get on our website and click where the area says donate. If you can donate a thousand dollars seed, Oh my goodness, that would be so wonderful. If you can sow and donate a $50 seed, that would be wonderful. Some of you may be able to do some very large seed. And as I said, it's, it's a big expenditure. Now you say, does it really go there? Oh yeah, you know it goes there because I go with it. And I've been doing it for years, this is not new. And the fact that I'm older now, it's even better. Oh, isn't God something else? And I believe when you sow seed of faith like that, it comes back on you. That harvest comes on you. I believe when Wally and I began to sow seed in Daisy and T.L. Osborne's ministry, who was all international ministry, I never dreamed someday I would be doing the same thing. I never dreamed God would provide for me in supernatural ways because with what you sow, you reap. And I want to pray with you right now. And don't think that any size seed is not important. You say, well, I could only sow a $50 seed. And you can click on that donate and do a $50 seed. A $50 seed is wonderful. Imagine if we had a thousand $50 seeds. That is awesome. And folks, you know, you say, well, you're so old. I know that makes it better because they like old women. And especially the imams who are the leaders of mosques, they invite me to speak, to speak in their mosque. You say, well, why do they do that? Honey, I love a mystery. It's only a God thing. So let's just pray what God would have you do. 
Can you do a very large C? That would be wonderful. Can you do a $50,000 seat, a $1,000 seat? Can you do a $50 seat? Just know that when you sow, you're going to reap. No sowing, no reaping. And that's just the way it works. And so you can say, well, I don't think it works that way. Too late to tell me that I've been doing it too long and I'm older than you probably. Don't you agree? So let's just pray right now. What God would have you do, and what I want you to do, is listen and obey. Hear and obey. Are you ready? Let's pray. So, Father, we just thank you that you want us to love the lost. That's where your heart is. You want us to reach people that are unreached. Your heart is there. And God, my heart is there. And I believe the people who are watching me today, they have a heart for this. And so I'm thanking you that we're going to have a lot of $1,000 seeds, a lot of $50 seed. But most of all, Father, we're going to have a lot of people born again in February when we go. And Father, thank you that my age doesn't make a difference. Doesn't make a difference. That it actually is enhancing what I do. Oh God, you're so good. You're so economical, you don't waste anything. Don't let anyone watching me waste this opportunity. But get on our website and sow a large seed.